morning drowning in memories, tracking the good, worshiping the bad, you will want to kill him. Molly, I have uh, you, you, I, your band, you're all friends, and you were friends before the band, as I understand it, right? Um, mostly. Loosely. We didn't know each other that well, but enough, yeah. But you're all friends now. It's like a genuine, you're hanging out and having a blast as friends. And, um, oh, I, I, yeah. We're like family for sure. So, the, the, and this isn't to de- get on down to any negatives. How do you work creatively, creatively with friends? Because you know you're all probably coming from at least slightly different viewpoints of what you want to do, or how you want it to sound, or what message you want to get out. How do you navigate the creative process with a group? Well, I mean, it's very easy for us to all communicate with each other. If one of us has an idea, we're always going to try it. We're always going to okay. try out, like maybe like 20 different versions of one song like we will always wow. always try out an idea and we will all say yeah i liked that or maybe we should try this thing instead you know i mean we're yeah. just very good at communicating with each other what we all think sounds good and what we can agree on that's really amazing uh having been in in bands and uh we just fought <laughs> uh, but the idea of just trying it that's a really good rule that actually should apply to a lot of people who are out there doing it just give it a try what's what's the problem with seeing what happens so um that's yeah. just a really really good lesson um so yeah you do have rules and ways to work that's amazing um M- melody i want to know who you read and who inspires you Um, Eric LaRocca has definitely been my favorite author since I was in high school. I remember when I first discovered his books, I literally, I ditched classes for the day. I went out and I sat outside on campus and I was like, I have to read all of these start to finish. I'm not putting it down. Um, something really cool for me with Eric LaRocca was when it came time for me to publish my book, I actually got to get in contact with him and ask him to do the epigraph for it, which, oh my gosh, I don't know if I've ever cried so hard, (laughs) but, um, Jody Picoult was someone I grew up reading, uh, Rin Shupeko, Mm -hmm. a lot of different artists from a lot of different genres within literature, but I've taken so much inspiration from so many different amazing, amazing people. I knew I wanted to ask that question to you. (laughs) (laughs) I just, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's uh, phenomenal uh, in this day and age to, to have so many of those names right there and be a big fan too. Um, reading's a, 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 a art is slowly going away, I think, sometimes. So um, it's nice to know that there are people out there bringing it back and, and doing great things with it. So, uh, Kai, um, we talked about the the people that you know uh, that you grew up watching. How, how much? Who are some up and comers right now that you that you uh, or really respect and get behind them making it as as far as you. Like like up and comers who I'm a fan of. Yeah, like somebody who's getting started off. Like you know, you've seen some good um, stuff. You're like, you need to stick with it. Uh, well, I know that's a good question because um, uh, I feel like you know, you get people who are really passionate about like um. You know, you get these people who are really passionate about bitching about things. You get, you get people who are really passionate about, you know, uh, to, you know, just being jolly and wholesome and just, you know, all things good, like uh, Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, right? I'm kind of in a weird um, middle ground where I'm really passionate about, um, about like, kind of evangelizing um, the uh, artists or, you know, art that I feel is really uh, underrated and, you know, needs to be, uh, you know, given a uh, recognition. Elevated. Um, so no, I'm, 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 so I'm very glad you asked, you're asking the right guy and it's not in some kind of hipster mentality either, because if these things, 
did suddenly become like mainstream commodified things on the billboards on you know uh 42nd street i wouldn't be doing the whole like well i liked it first thing i'd just be grateful that they got you know the worthy recognition yeah um so with that said um uh i uh i really like uh so she's one of the newer uh, members of uh, the smashing pumpkins she's been with them for the last 10 years um her name is Katie Cole. Um, she uh, so she joined about ten years ago, and she's both um, a solo artist and she's also in the been in the band. I think is like a multi instrumentalist. She's this really beautiful uh, uh, redhead Australian. Uh, she's super cool. Um, and kind of hearing her, you know, kind of you know, because I think uh, she's one, and then another uh, kind of big influence. I don't want to say they're up and coming because they're up all like you know two or three times my age maybe at this point, but um. Uh, another one is Paul Wiley, who uh, I got to meet this last year. He's the uh, the current guitarist for Marilyn Manson. Who uh, he's also the, the score composer. Uh, he did the music for the Terrifier movies. Um, I think he's doing the third one coming up. Um, and um, I got to see him, you know, back in 2016 when he was with them. And I saw saw the Pumpkins a little later on, and Katie was in there. So, but I've spoken with uh, I when I met Paul. Um, he was, uh, you know, he was at a convention and it was really getting to talk to him was cool. And what I, I, the reason why I bring up these two in particular um, is because, you know, they're a part of, you know, two bands that, um, you know, uh, exploded in the 1990s and um, right. they, they came aboard later, you know, past the kind of immediate pop culture zeitgeist. But they're, uh, you know, they, you know, they're, uh, I feel like, you know, kind of, they bring something else to the band, you know, like a certain like culture, a certain virtuoso that wasn't there. You know, Paul is like, sure. you know, like a composer, you know, he's very, uh, he has a lot of uh, cerebration. And um, uh, so that's, you know, hearing him talk, you know, like getting talking was very cool. He wasn't, you know, he's not, he's like the antithesis of like, you know, cliche, you know, like douchebag rock star. He's like a very humble down to earth guy. Um, and, with Katie Cole from Smashing Pumpkins, um, you know, the fact that she's like, you know, she's, I think, based in Nashville and her, all her solo stuff is like Americana country type, um, you know, music. But then, yeah, she, she goes with Smashing Pumpkins and it's the exact opposite. Um, you know, I basically, I, I really respect anyone who, uh, you know, any, an artist with that kind of a, you know, virtuoso and like a double faceted part of their career. Cause I mean, I don't think I could ever do that. Um, you know, um, I feel like I'm very, you know, right. you know, maybe I'm kind of one note. I, I, I might be different. No, no, you're not. But, no, um, uh, it, it's it, when it comes to music, I, I, I think everybody gets their their second threat or third threat as they go. So, yeah. uh, never put yourself down. You have many notes. You just haven't played them yet. You know. No, that's a, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I met Paul, and I, I, you know, I messaged him here and there. I we I talked, and I was sending my stuff, and um. I, uh, I message, you know, Katie and I ask her questions or advice here and there too. So, and the fact that, you know, I've seen them in like, you know, in iconic bands and like, you know, crowded sold out venues and they're willing to take the time to talk or like, you know, give me, you know, musical advice when I ask is pretty, I, you know, I feel pretty touched by that. Um, so there too, uh, who, you know, solo and they do their own stuff. They're also part of a, you know, iconic yeah. bands in and of themselves. So there too, I always find myself, uh, you know, if kind of, you know, advocating for, you know, with like signs out in the street being like, listen to, listen to, uh, the, the, you know, um, soundtracks for Terrifier and, you know, uh, check out, uh, Katie Cole's solo stuff. So as well as her stuff with the Smashing Pumpkins, cause I, I love all the new stuff they've done. I think it's some of their best stuff yet with her. Um, so yeah. Cool. Well, we have, uh, two questions from the audience. Um, uh, let, which the first one up do you want to get up there, Josh? Uh, hello, uh, Sienna N says. I have a question for everyone. Since everyone makes a type of art, what kind of feeling does everyone get when they share it with others? And I know we've, we've kind of touched on this, but does anybody have like a couple quick? Uh, it must be pretty incredible, uh, is is what they're going for. So, anybody have any great stories? Uh, just quick, what it's like to meet the fans and uh, uh, when, 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 even just sharing it. What's that feel like? First of all, um, fear. 
Absolutely. Oh. I mean, we're, Fear. I feel like everyone has those moments where we're scared to death putting something out there, but you know, we're all here because we're kind of putting ourselves into this industry of fame and saying, this is what we want to do. So every time I get the chance to really share something with an audience, it's just one step closer for me. And it's an affirmation every time that this is what I'm meant to do. And yeah, it is an insanely incredible feeling. Yeah. Molly. It is. Yeah, I totally agree. It's incredible especially like the process of it feels so like you work so hard in it for so long and when it finally pays off like it's a very emotional experience that you get to share with people that you love so yeah that's awesome kai um yeah um my my mantra has always been you know um uh, I, I make things that I would want to consume myself, you know, otherwise I wouldn't put it out. I wouldn't feel like, you That's know, fair. in the, the right, you know, conscience doing it. Um, so when I do, you know, share whatever I've made and, um, I mean, honestly, like, I don't know, it sounds kind of funny, but like, honestly, I feel like the best friends I've made of recent years are people who, you know, liked whatever it was that I made and I took the approach that they were, you know, friends, like-minded people as opposed to being, um, you know, fans, you know, cause I, I didn't want to, you know, to me, I mean, to me, it was just the same thing as if I was sharing, you know, a band that I liked or, you know, a movie that okay. I liked or like there, you know, I, um, you know, I'm always, you know, glad to be, you know, talking to people and, you know, potentially making uh, new friends and stuff. So, um, I think not, you know, you know, and being able to just, you know, um, see them as, you know, people with, you know, like-minded interests and not, you know, uh, my fans who, you know, I, you know, am above, you know, on some kind of pedestal that, that was the, uh, well, you know, I think, um, made a big difference, uh, in the long run. Thank you. Uh, we have another one more question from the audience. Practical Magic seven 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 asks question for everyone: If you could work with one celebrity in your industry, just one, who would it be? Uh, let's start with you, Kai, um, since we put you last on the last one. Uh, I feel like I've, I've I've already listed so many. Um, no, you get one now. Just okay. one. Make it somebody um, you haven't worked with. Get them in. Like let's get get them in now. Let's lock okay. I'm gonna make it someone like super random, uh, no nice. one's expecting. Um, get uh, I want to get someone okay, completely outside, divorced from my uh, immediate uh, genre and everything. Get um, someone like uh, uh, Tori Amos or, or Seal. Tori Amos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So get get one of those guys, you know, on the same you know, on the same song as me. Um, I think, cause that's the only way that you'd get any real, uh, I could, I could actually see a collab with you and Tori, <laughs> like something little earthquakes era with you also in the mix would be great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I know Tori's Tori's uh she's a big one. She's, I've never, you know, met her or her or anything, but I've always been a big fan. Stretch goal. Um, and for some reason, um, I know like she's fr uh, a lot of, you know, folks from you know my you know immediate genre who like you know like music that i like or make they they all we all seem to hold tori in a, a pretty high regard so um yeah yeah that would be really that would be uh you know uh that'd be cool because i feel like you know that's um you know there'd be a good chemistry there um i think if i got you know if i was like doing a duet with someone who sounded like me then uh or you know had you know just it would be yeah yeah redundant so i'm all about no, it. if we can make that happen i'm buying i'm buying it i want to hear it like that's it sounds great uh Thank we're gonna go uh continue to go into first order molly you've had time to think about it you get to pick one celebrity and it can't be tori amos <laughs> um i would choose john bryan he's a composer he's scored movies he did the score for Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. Okay. I would love to work with him on either some sort of like album or I also in the future want to work on claymation movies. So if he were to score a movie that I worked on with my art in it, that would be amazing too. That's phenomenal. Great answer. Uh, Melody? 
You've had you've had time to think about it. Pick your number one. It can't be either of those. For me, definitely Jesse Itzler. He's an entrepreneur and an author, and he's done a lot of work for the mental health industry. Something he preaches that resonates so much with me is mental toughness. And I always find myself every step of the way in this career thinking, oh, my God, what would Jesse Itzler do right now? So getting the <laughs> chance to maybe work with him through an interview or some kind of article would be absolutely phenomenal. I would love to be able to pick his brain because I just have an infinite amount of respect for him. Amazing. Thank you so much for those answers. Thank you for the question. Um, Practical Magic 777. We really, that's a great question. I think it trumped many of mine. So thank you so much. Um, wow. And, and you, you said the right thing. <laughs> uh, Practical Magic. I love Jesse. That's a good answer. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Melody, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? 10 years from now. Oh my God. <laughs> You know, I uh, really, really cannot say I have a solid answer for that, but I know I'm always going to be doing something creative and whether or not I move on from writing to some other project, you know, whether it's music, filmmaking, whatever it may be, I know that any industry that allows me to create and express myself through different projects, I'll be a part of. That's amazing. I hope you absolutely get there and I hope that I'm still following you. I can't wait to see where you go. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, back to Molly. Sorry to keep you in the middle here, but where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? 10 years from now. Yeah. My goal is to be working as a commission artist. I want to sell sculptures and hopefully have them displayed in places where anyone can see them. And I also definitely want music to still be a part of my life. I want to have albums recorded and I want to still play shows whenever I can. This, just remember, there's only one person that could take that away from you. And that's you. So um, I, I walked away from it stupidly and I still miss it. So don't do, don't do what I did. Keep going. Um, and I hope I'm also following you then. I, I, if you're doing it, I'm sure I will be. So keep it up. Um, you're all here because we were impressed by what we saw. And Kai, we're going to end the show with you, sir. And I want to know where you plan to be or where you'd like to be in 10 years. Um, I'd uh, hope to have uh, sung some notes I haven't sung yet. <laughs> you know? Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think um, part of the... I wouldn't call it imposter syndrome, but one thing I do feel oftentimes when I talk about what I do, I feel like I'm kind of talking about, like in it and like theoretically because it's something... And it's not to say that I don't, you know, make music or act in movies, but I feel like it happens so, like, it progresses so sporadically, and I haven't really done the things that I say that I do quite yet. So I, I don't know. Just I hope to, um, you know, to um, for you know to keep going and there to be you know consistency and, uh, um, you know, um, I definitely hope to, um, you know, end up. Uh, you know, performing more um, once we get this whole you know album, which I've like you know like a mortgage hope that you know get that out there and um, i hope to have worked with um one of the many um you know big influences or positive you know sure. inspirations um I hope to work with one of them um by then um especially diane diane franklin because i think I've, I've mentioned it to her a few times and uh she's uh you know um she's up for it um like you know do it get things it. Uh, set up for like the next project Cool. I, uh, I, I've seen the quality of your work along with Molly and Melody, and we can go back to the to big three screen if we still have that. I've seen the quality of your work, everybody, and I absolutely believe all of you have what it takes to make it if you keep this work ethic up. Um, every like, Kai, your video is amazing. Your, your choice of voices in it is exactly what it needed to be. I also like theatrical music. You, King Diamond, if you, I'm sure you've heard of him, but like, I like the theater with it. I like the story. I like the whole character. I like the persona. Um, yeah. And you're doing it right. You've made me notice you. So that's battle number one with anything. Melody, you. you approached me. I didn't know much about you. And I got to see that video of yours. And I was blown away. I actually had a question here. I kind of had to skip the, let me just say, the balls it took to get up there and do that. And you're not shaking. And if you are, I can't see it. You nail it. <laughs> you own that stage. You look amazing. Your poetry is amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. As many of the things as you're doing, I know like you have this in you and please let it out and share it with everybody. And Molly, your, your, I've, your artwork is the first thing I noticed. It blew me away. Um, the first 
thing I ever saw of yours blew me away. And it continues to, when I saw the, the videos of your band, same thing. And like, I'm like, this is, these are people having fun. These are people who are doing music right for fun. They're, they're giving it to everybody. And the same thing goes for you. Like everybody here, I hope to be talking to you in 10 years from now. And you guys, like, I don't have time for you, Mr. Relationship Smith, but thanks for the invite. I have a lot of stuff to do. I hope you're so big you can't talk to me. So uh, when you guys are big, please remember me. Please be gracious. And um, I want to thank you for giving us your time. I want to thank everybody for your questions, for watching. Um, before we go, real quick, uh, let's give you each a minute to promote what you have going on now or what you have going on next. Anything you want to promote. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, but Kai. You're on the right. Let's go with you. Hey, uh, so right now I'm flying back to New York City tomorrow, busy prep day on Saturday. Sunday I shoot uh, the music video for my second single, which was released back in October. Uh, This one is called Redial for Remnants, which is a semi-autonomous play on Dial M for Murder, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's film. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to being the uh, perverse demonic reimagining of... uh, grace kelly in the the phone call scene where you you know i'm gonna get blood all over my white dress and then tear it off and reveal dominatrix outfit and then you know do all kinds of uh you know lascivious things to the uh the who the 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 villain who becomes rendered my victim um so yeah i'm looking forward to that um and (laughs) like the phrasing yeah so that's gonna come out hopefully towards the end of april um because i don't like you know, it's stagnating and sitting on music videos too long because I think that's the advantage they have over feature films. Those have to, you know, go through limbo for a while and distribution, whereas you can just, you know, get a music video out pretty uh, pretty quickly. Um, cuts out the middleman. Yeah. And I'm shooting Skate to Hell, um, which is the feature film I mentioned. And there's another uh, film coming up that has a lot of the same cast members. Um, Eric Roberts is in both films. Uh, the Farmhouse Murders is another a uh, horror um, thing I'm attached to, which uh, we're shooting in Jersey this summer that has um, Larry Hankin in it as well. Um, uh, character actors been a lot of stuff. Uh, people recognize him mainly as Mr. I Hankin. know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, Marlon Taylor, who played the, um, the um, past counterpart for Mike in the original um, Stephen King's It miniseries with Tim Curry. Um, he's in it too. So I'm real excited. Um, oh, and uh, Eliza Roberts, Eric's wife, she's going to be in it too. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to shoot that. And um, I hope to shoot a music video for um, my other song, His Girl Friday the 13th, before the end of the year, but by like Halloween, because that's like that of all my songs, that's the most obnoxious. So it's everyone's favorite. So uh, I get. like it. And yeah, you got to for Halloween. Come on. Yeah, I get one after that. And um, yeah, I hope to get, you know, just get the record finished and start performing more because that's the one, you know, that's kind of the, you know, the uh, consistency I'd like to, uh, you know, really get going um, in the next year or so. Cool. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Melody, uh, we're going to give you a minute or two here. But first, we have one last question for you from chat. Do you have a podcast? I feel like I could listen to you all day. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, I have a podcast I'm currently recruiting for. That'll be coming out in this spring. It's called Feminine Fruitful, and I'm having 12 different amazing women from different industries come on there and kind of tell me about their career and what they're doing to kind of use their feminine presence to push them forward in life. Cool. And uh, just let's go with a plug for what you do have going on for your book, where to get it, anything you want to plug right now. The time is yours. All right. Well, so you, you can find me. <laughs> you can find me at vitoire.com. It should be right there below my name. Uh, on my website right now, you can download my free printable self-help book that I authored called Finding Yourself in 2024. And you can also find me on all social media at Melody Vitoire. Like I said, I'm hoping to have my podcast come out this spring. I'll be doing a mini press tour for my current book, Temptations with Splintered Heart, which you can buy right now on Amazon. Um, it is my favorite project I've worked on today. So all the support I can get on that, I appreciate infinitely. And then one last thing, I am hoping to have my memoir, Leech, come out this fall. Amazing. Again, please let us know and uh, we'll, we'll push it out. Uh, friends of the show, stay friends of the show. Molly, <laughs> let's give you the final minute or two to plug whatever you want to plug. All right. We've got a few shows coming up. Sunday morning, we are playing 
next Friday, March 29th at Venary's Pizza. It is a clown-themed show, so if you come dressed up as a clown, you get a discount on your ticket. And we will be selling merch for the first time. So come and get a shirt and have a good time. And we're also playing a show on April 20th at Ferguson's. So, yeah, those are going to be awesome. And, and these are in the Vegas area, right? Mate, yes, yes. Cool. I'm in Las Vegas, just so everyone knows. Um, just just so what people know, like, they don't go to the wrong Ferguson's or something, like, in their, their town. Uh uh, what else do you want to talk about? The last thing I'm going to promote is my senior art show. I am okay. having it with my bandmate. She's also an art major at our school. And it's going to be showcasing all of our artwork that we are the most confident in from the past couple years that we've been art majors at our school. So, yeah, it's really important to us. It would be awesome if you guys could come. It is... April 4th on Thursday in two weeks at LVA High School in Las Vegas, just so yeah. everyone knows. Thank you so much for sharing everything. Thank you for everybody, to everybody for sharing yourselves, sharing your time, sharing your artwork, sharing your vision, your future. I can't thank you enough for being here, all of you. And anybody out there watching who watches this, is watching this live, watching this later, please support these people. Everybody deserves a chance, and these people, I think, uh, definitely deserve it more than anybody. You can find them uh, by the names down below and the link that we're going to have. Uh, all, uh, everybody's on Instagram, of course. Uh, we'll tell you how to get in touch. If you can't find something you want to know, please reach out. Uh, send a question to the show. We will get you in touch with them, uh, however we, we to, to their groups or whatever you need. Uh, let us know. We're going to get out of here, everybody. We've reached our hour. Thank you so much. Melody Vitoire, Kaya Caldro, Molly Gilbert. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful weekend. Let's get out of here, Josh. Have a great one. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Be safe out there. Treat each other well.